elections because hot on the plate coming through just some few minutes ago on Ghana tonight. The latest poll by Global Info Analytics shows that Dr. Mahmoud Obamiam is losing grounds in the Ashanti region. This is coming up next here on Ghana tonight. And this is one that we, we're looking at quite closely and exactly why Global Info Analytics puts it this way. So the results of a, a tracking poll that just came through from Global Info Analytics shows that the new patriotic party's flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, has slumped from 73% to 65% in the Ashanti region after Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe was selected as running mate. And why the linkage will tell you exactly why this is the linkage and why this is actually very important in doing the analysis um, going forward, especially because it was quite clear that the MPP made that decision to choose Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe specifically to galvanize the base of the party in its stronghold. How's that working? That's why Musa Dankwa went back there. We'll be, we'll be finding out from him a bit more detail into this latest poll. As you see there, the 1st of August, it just came through minutes ago today. Ashanti Regional Opinion Poll, this is the second poll that Global Health Analytics is doing in the Ashanti region. If you flip to uh, the other specific instances that we see, this talks about the education uh, background of all these persons that were surveyed. Now, I want you to look at this, the party affiliations of the persons who were surveyed. 50.43% of the total survey, that's the sample size, were MPP, 20.32% NDC, and some 15.99% floating voters. And then also you have a little over 2% being other political parties, and some 11.2% said they would not disclose their party affiliations. So that's to just give you an idea of the composition in terms of the vote, the, the affiliations of the persons who took part in this survey. Now look at the constituency, MPP constituencies that he, he focused on, from Afra North South West, Adansia Sukwa, KT Hamon's constituency, the Jabin constituency near Dubiasi, or Finsu North, Ahafo, Anon North, Obwasis, all these constituencies are in the Ashanti region, heavy uh, for, for the MPP. The other question that is of interest, if you look at it quite closely, is the attention that these persons who were surveyed are paying to the presidential election. A lot of them say they are doing so, 46.2%. First-time voters, just about 11.89%, and over 88% of these respondents to the survey are people who have been voting. They are not first-time voters as well, as we see. Then... The next question that was asked, if would you say things in this country today are generally heading in the right direction or wrong direction? The 47% of them say, yes, it is heading towards the right direction. 48%, this is in the Ashanti region, the struggle of the MPP, so it's heading towards the wrong direction. And 5% say they don't have an opinion on whether it's heading towards the right direction or the wrong direction. Musa Dankwa is joining us in a, a bit um, on Zoom for a quick conversation on this. Musa, I appreciate your time here on, on Ghana tonight. And I see that uh, all of this points to a, a particular direction. And first of all, let's establish what the sample size is for this latest poll and the details that we've just had. Musa Dankwa. Um, thank you very much for having me. The sample size was 1,000. Kindly put your video on for me, please. Okay, just give me one second out. Okay, while well, well, we are at it, as Musa Damkwa will fix that, that connection to him, and so we have an, a clear understanding. They, com they did, that, did that comparison to the year before, the following best describe the standard of living. The respondents were there. Zadankwa is joining us, Global Health Analysis Executive Director. Zadankwa, you answered the question about exactly what the sample size was for this one? Yeah, the sample size is uh, 1,392 for this sample. Um, interviews were conducted from last week around 28 till this morning. 
I see. And, and one interesting fact that I see, that at least based on the outcome that you put out in this poll, is a question of the likely impact of Dr. Matthew Poco Prempe on the voting for the MPP in the December election. Now, based on the comparison that you do in the July 4 poll that you did, just when uh, Dr. Matthew Poco Prempe was uh, announced as a running mate, you see that th there's been a drop. In yeah, July, um, there was 62% who said because of Dr. Matthew Poco Prempe, they'll vote for the MPP. On August 1, just about a month later, it's dropped to 58%. What did you say in there? What, what, why did they tell you the, the decision to not now go on the other path that they were on, on, on July 4? With voters, and during the first round of the poll, we saw a high number of people saying that they will be influenced by that. Um, fast forward to today, you could see that that number has dropped by four percentage point, and then those who are unlikely has jumped from 21 to 29 percent, and those that are neutral has also dropped. So you could see probably uh, momentum uh, slowing down the region uh, with regards to voting for uh, the MPP because of Napoleon, uh, because of Napoleon. But that was the major reason why he was chosen, is it not? To galvanize the base of the party in the stronghold of the party yeah. in the Ashanti region. Yes, um, I think the euphoria hasn't lasted long. And probably if you look at the aftermath of his speech and what followed it, probably that may have accounted for uh, what we are seeing in the polls now in the region. But then I want to make sense of the previous slide I just showed, which indicates a 4% drop in those who say that because of Dr. Matthew Pogba, they're going to vote for the MPP. And then this one, this one that you asked the question, which of the following running mates do you believe can do a better job as vice president? And then you have 62.45% of the respondents saying Dr. Matthew Pogba can do a good job as against 20.67% who say Professor Jan, Jenan Opoko Ajiman will do a great job. How do we reconcile these two positions? Yeah, the, this question is the, this is the first time we're asking that question in the region. So we don't have a comparison uh, data to, to, to compare or little to compare. But clearly, you can see that um, is among the, uh, between um, Napoleon or between Napo and Jenan, is quite overwhelmingly preferred to to to, uh, to be the best president do a better job um but as to whether they will vote for you that's another thing to see um slight difference between uh, preference to be something and actually voting for you if you look at um where it's now the number is not far from what bmp eventually gets in the poll so probably that is in line i see but overall what's what's the message in there uh, Mr. Dankwa, for, for this? Um, the message is that uh, the chosen running mate hasn't had the effect that probably they anticipate he would have. Uh, if this is what has come from the region, and I don't know what else is happening elsewhere. I see. But then again, you ask a question about which of the following parties' candidates do you intend to vote for? This for, for presidential. Right, that, that, that's the 2024 parliamentary elections. The number of them, 21.6% said NDC, NPP 64.1. But for the presidential, we also see a, a dip in the respondents for Dr. Mahmoud Obama. I mean, what accounted for this based on your interactions and your study of that outcome? You know, the... There has been a movement in the floating voters in the Shanti region between the first poll and this second poll. You see that the floating voters in the region have shifted a bit away from DMB. You have about 5.5% of them, Muhammad, uh, getting an increase of 5.5% compared to the last period among floating voters. And that's about when we are going down 16.6% among the same floating voters. And Alan making a gain of 
13.2%. So that is a huge movement in the numbers with regard to floating voters. And then if you look at the, um, the, the younger or even old voters by age, and you compare what Baumi had last time and what he's having this time, you see that he's declined about 7.8% among 18 to 24 years old, declined 10.7% between 25 to 34 years old, mm -hmm. and another 10% between 35 and 44 years old, and 2% or 2.9% among 54 to 50, uh, 45 to 54 years old, and also declined by 15% among people who are I, I, about I, I see. 54 years. But but then again, so the, the argument will be the argument will be that we have some 127 days there about to election 2024 December 7. That's a long time to change or swing the pendulum in the stronghold of the party. Now, did you ask the question of whether there's a possibility of a change of mind at least amongst the persons you surveyed? Um, I think that there is a, a, a question, I don't know what I'll be captured in this uh, report, but largely we, we have seen across across board, people are firming up with, with, with their choices in terms of who they want to vote for. Um, <clears throat> about 86.6% of the people we spoke to in Ashanti region, in fact, said that they made up their mind. Right. O only 35 are saying that they may change their mind or they are likely to change their mind and 9.9 .9 .9 are neutral now if you are leading getting quite big in that region and you have this number that that should be good news for you i see but if you look at where the mpp wants to be and where it is now and this chunk of people saying they've made up their mind they may really struggle to get that 85 percent that they set for themselves in the region zadanko i appreciate your time on this and i, I thank you so much for coming through here